This video is brought to you by none other than Hire Heroes, you guys. Hire Heroes is your one-stop shop when it comes to virtual staffing and making sure that you have qualified talent with your business. One thing that I love about Hire Heroes, you guys, is they've actually gone through the process already of vetting and making sure that your staff member is well-trained to best fit your needs. Whether you need help with social media work, posting things on your accounts, responding to people that send messages to your social media accounts, whether you need help with data entry or a multitude of other things that they're qualified to do, Hire Heroes has got you covered. If you're having trouble finding quality talent and number two, affording to be able to run payroll for that talent, Hire Heroes has got you covered with an affordable alternative to have a virtual assistant working for your business. There's a link down in the description of this video to where you can learn more about getting your own VA through Hire Heroes. I certainly recommend it. They're what we use in our business for all of our virtual assistant needs, and you will want to make sure that you check them out today. So what do you need to be massively successful in this business? Well, to me, I think there's a few basic principles. You need to be thinking, why do I want to be massively successful? Why do I want to be massively successful? Some people throw things at me when I'm having conversations with them where they say, well, I don't need that. Christian, you're talking about building a million dollar business. I don't need that in my life. I'm good. I just want to be happy. I just want to spend time with my family as if one thing had anything to do with the other. I spend more time with my family than 99% I think of fathers do. It's only a problem if you say it's a problem in your head first. So let's talk a few things about why it actually is important for you to be massively successful that you might not be thinking about, right? Because when I hear things like, I don't need to be super successful, I just want to be happy, I just want to spend time with my family, there's a lot of I in those, don't you think? I'm not hearing too much about your communities. I'm not hearing too much about your clients. I'm not hearing too much about your agents. I'm not hearing too much about your family outside that you, you want to be with them. I understand that. But are they taken care of? Are they taken care of generally, generation, generationally? Can't talk today. So when you're massively successful, first things first, you can help more clients. Yes or no? In this business, how successful you are is directly correlated with how many people you help. What a great business we're in. You cannot get to the top unless you help a lot of people in the best way possible first. They go hand in hand. Successful people, in addition to that, create jobs, they launch careers, they take their families into a place where they live the best life possible. So for those of you that are telling yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't need to be massively successful. I just want to spend time with my family. Why wouldn't you want your family to live the best life they could? It's a question. Successful people are also the most charitable. People talk a lot of smack about people like Warren Buffett, in the media, in the news, people like Bill Gates. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But guys like that give more to charity than most people will earn in their lifetime. Probably than this entire room put together will earn in their lifetime. The most successful people are the people that change the world the most. They think more about others than just themselves. So these are just some some things we got to get out of the way. We got to change the way you guys are thinking if you want to be massively successful. It's bigger than just you. So limiting beliefs, okay? I believe that a lot of people walk around day to day with misconceptions is what I would call them, but for the sake of this presentation, we're going to call them limiting beliefs. They're things they heard at one point in time during their life that they think are true. And they don't even know why they believed it. How many times have you read something online about a celebrity? And you're like, oh, must be true. Taylor Swift did what? 
You just think it's true. Or you talk to an agent and said, I don't like that guy. I don't like that guy. You never met the person. Why do you think that about them? It's because you heard it from somebody else. You didn't have any direct experience. So here's some limiting beliefs that I think hold people back. I see it on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm working with agents. Do consulting calls every single week, and I see these things over and over again. The belief that saving money is good. Saving money is the same thing as losing money in today's economy, in today's world. I would rather spend money on my business 10 times out of 10. Because even if it doesn't go my way, it's better than it going down with inflation in value. We live in a hyperinflation world. We've all been told that Dave Ramsey said, save money. But the company that employs Dave Ramsey spends a lot of money. The company that hosts his radio station spend a lot of money to advertise his show, to make his millions. But we've all been told, save money. Grassroots marketing is great. I love grassroots marketing. I'm not here to say anything bad about grassroots marketing, but at some point in time, in my opinion, it's going to have a cap on what it can do for you. If your whole business model is to spend as little as possible, you're going to have a ceiling. And don't get me wrong, you can do great. There's agents I know in this business that do fantastic spending no money. But they're never the most successful agents I know. Offense. So, play offense, not defense. In the NFL, quarterbacks are higher paid positions than cornerbacks for a reason. Everybody loves some Richard Sherman, but he wasn't making no Tom Brady money. People like offense. And in our world, offense wins championships. Defense might win championships in sports, but offense wins championships in business. Business is going to favor the, the bold and the person that's actually going out of their way to play offense. The idea that staying small is good. If you aren't growing in this business, you're shrinking. Staying level or coasting is, is a myth. I've seen so many agents over the years that just work referrals. They don't play offense. They don't try to aggressively expand. And they fall off. Even if they're doing great customer retention, even if they're doing everything right, if you're focused too much on customer retention and not enough on customer acquisition, no matter what you do, you're going to lose clients. They might die. You might lose a few here or there. It's going to happen. You've got to be focused on acquisition first, retention second. It's not a popular thing to say, but it's true. Doesn't mean retention's not important, but it can't come at the cost of acquisition. You always have tomorrow. Never guaranteed. This is something we all know. Starting tomorrow has a compounding effect. Anybody read the book, The Compound Effect, Darren Hardy? It's a good book. If you haven't read it, highly recommend it. It's a book about compounding effects of your habits and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And there is something to be said about, I'm going to start doing this tomorrow. Or I'm going to get through quarter one. I'm going to implement this new idea into my business. Or I, I know I need to be doing this, but I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to start next quarter. I'm going to start next year. I'm going to start in January. There's a compounding effect. And sometimes tomorrow never comes. <laughs>